Hello and welcome back to Driver's Therapy. In today's video, we have an awesome car with an awesome owner, <laughs> Darren's 2015 M4. Now guys, I mean, this thing is just gorgeous <laughs> with the backdrop, but we're gonna let Darren talk about it. Thank so you. So Darren, tell us about your M4. What, when did you when did you first get it? How long have you had it? I've had it about three years now. Okay. You know, I was able to purchase it through, through an auction website and it was in Southern California. And um, yeah, it was a 2015 with 8,500 miles on it. Wow, so you did you purchase it like sight unseen? Pretty much, yeah. Oh, cool. They had some pictures on the website. Okay. So checked it out. Um, my brother owns a car lot here in town, so we we're able to get onto like the Carfax, check all that stuff, you know. And then once you purchase from these sites, they do an inspection on the vehicle for you. So if they find anything that's major, they'll tell you, and you can just cancel that's the sale. That's really neat. I've, so it works out. I've always thought about auctions and stuff like that. But, you but you're right, you've, I've, never, I've never driven it, I never test drove anything like it. Yes, so pretty much sight unseen. But it wasn't your first BMW. No. 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 <laughs> this is my third, okay. and uh, the, the previous ones were all M cars as well. That's cool. So you, you already had experience with yes. the car itself. I did. I've had experience with previous ones, and every one I've driven I've really, really enjoyed. So That's I figure it's a pretty safe bet. Now, now, I know the viewers out there know that I'm in the, in the JDM world. Um, which but, is great. <laughs> yeah, it's great. And Beautiful I, cars. I've always heard about M3s. Mm -hmm. I, I was pretty, my friend got bought an M1 when it came out. Uh, and um, 1M. Yeah, well, the, the little one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 1M. Yeah, 1M. The, the traditional very first M car was called an M1. Was it that supercar? Yes. Yeah, okay. The, the wide one. Yeah. So they just said, we'll never call anything that again. So they make sure you say the 1M. Well, that's cool. So, yeah, <laughs> that's a geeky BMW yeah. thing. Well, we BMW love, fans will know. We love learning this. Yeah. Thing. So, so I, I heard about M3s, but then the M4 came out. Tell yes. me about the M4. Um, so for whatever reason, about this time, BMW just decided to call, it's a three series chassis, uh, but it just is two doors. So if it was a three series chassis that was two doors, that was their four series. They made a lot of different models like they do everything else, but basically it's a two door three series, which they used to call the three series coupe. So not different just a new naming system. Okay, cool, cool. Well, I know that the M badge is just, I, I love it. So when you got the car, you you did mention that it wasn't all stock, which you kind of, no. you got to deal with it. I did, <laughs> I did. Um, I figured out, I think it was probably around $7,000 maybe of aftermarket parts already installed on the vehicle. That's awesome. So um, yeah, it was just once I learned that um, and started investigating it i kind of just decided to go all in i said why not you were gonna, so did yeah. you fly to california to pick it up or did they bring it in a trailer no um they just uh we just hired a, a trucking company yeah so they just bring it on a trailer well i i like to think about that because i've only received one car on a trailer and it was exciting uh -huh. it was already mine it was just moving across country but you were getting okay. the car you bought and you yes. hadn't seen it so had to explain that day real quick it was it had to be exciting. it was cool i was working at the time um but my brother had his car a lot it arrived there um, so yeah, they just back it up, you know, and you download the car and then him and his son drove down to my place and we're like, Hey man, your car's here. <laughs> so it was, it was pretty, a pretty cool day. It wasn't, it was a busy day. I wasn't great ready for it. I thought it was going to be the next day, but, um, it was a good day. Now did you, you already had insurance so you could drive it right away. Yes. Yeah. Yep. We already, you know, yeah, I already set up all that stuff with the insurance company. So yeah, it was good to go. So you got in, you put the key in and what was your, well, actually when you got in, what was your mm -hmm. first impression? Cause it was like, you know, uh, it was a different car back then with the mods I've done, but uh, you know, still, I just, I just love the look of it and sitting in it there. It's, it's very comfortable, I think for what it is. And, um, just, just fell in love. I think it was pretty overwhelming. Um, there's a lot of adjustments you can do on the car and there's a lot of gizmos and gadgets. So, you know, you kind of feel a little overwhelmed. Um, but extremely excited and just, you know, happy to start learning about it. So the, the car had a lot to offer. It did. And since you've had it for three years, tell me about the progression of making it your own. You started to modify it, right? Yes, I did. Okay. So, so um, how it came is what they call, um, this company is called Dynan, and they um, work with BMW and uh, they make all these aftermarket parts for them. So um, the, the founder of the company uh, used to build race car motors. And so um, he actually developed a, a relationship with BMW. So any of the modifications you did with their parts, um, the warranty still transferred. You didn't affect warranty at all. That is so cool. It's almost like Shelby a little bit. Exactly. It's, 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 it's kind of an in-house tuner, but okay. not quite. M is their in-house tuner, but exactly. It's a third-party kind of in-house tuning thing. 
So even the dealerships will, they'll announce it and try to sell their own vehicles that they've done modifications on as dining vehicles. Hey, and you know, one crazy thing is that sometimes with these in-house like performance parts for manufacturers, mm -hmm. sometimes they're good, but every now and then people want to to go outside of it. But one thing I've noticed right. about Dynan, and I mm -hmm. said it right. I is, believe so, yes. Is that, is that people keep them. They like the parts. They I actually do. perform really well. They are, you know, they're expensive. Um, they have a point system, which I think, you know, it's more marketing. Um, but anyway, that's why I did it. So, so what, 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 what's this point system? This point system is, all they make all these aftermarket parts and assign them a point value. If you get 10 points total on your vehicle, they'll send you the badge. Well, they'll send it to a dealership and then they'll put it on the back of your car. So if they actually have that dining badge, you can't buy it, You're, you know, it would be fake. So if they really has that, that means it's it's had quite a bit of modifications done to it. Well, I would, the little that I know is the number one stolen badge for BMW is the M badge. Yes, <laughs> and yeah, people put it on everything. And like they say, uh, people who don't know don't care. Yeah. And the people who do know, know you're lying. And so care. why do it? Yeah. So I, I'm with that. I, I really hate the fake badging. I, I, I do not like that. It's, it's, a, it's a car thing. Right? Yes. So, so my car was a seven point car when it showed up. I okay. didn't realize they had put a performance exhaust on it. Nice. Um, they had done a stage one tune, they call it. It's a piggyback ECU because the ECUs were locked at this time. So was it a flash or was it a piggyback? It's a piggyback system. Oh, okay. It tucks up underneath um, one of my little uh, plastic protectors there in the oh, engine cool. compartment. And so, yeah, it plugs in a couple of places. And then um, from that one device, you can upgrade it to stage two and then stage three, uh, depending on the models. Some of the older models, they only did a stage one. So, but the particular M3, M4s, which are pretty much identical. Um, yeah, you can get a stage three total. And that's what this is now. Nice. And so it had that on there. And then it had, I believe a pedal kit, which I don't know why they give that points, but they <laughs> gave that. So three points for the exhaust, three points for the tune, and then one point for the aluminum pedal kit. Nice. So all I had to do was do three points and I got the badge. So that's how it started. That's how it started. That's how it started. Well, I it, thought I'd get their air intake and call it a day, but yeah. But then it snowballed. Oh, it's addicting. <laughs> Very addicting, as you know. Well, well, I mean, at this point, if we're gonna look at, if we're gonna talk yeah. about the engine, I think we should- You wanna see it? Engine bay. Yeah, let's of course. <laughs> So yeah, what's really cool with these, um, with the M3s and M4s, they have this exact same engine bay, um, but um, this piece of carbon, the strut brace here, is OEM and it's beautiful. Um, I saw pictures of the new one, they did away with that completely, nothing like that. So yeah, it's real unique, it's really, it's almost a piece of, piece of art really. And so, you know, just going everything else with carbon, I told you on the point system, the air intake was another three points, so that's what got me to my 10 points. And as you can see, it's carbon fiber from Dynan. And they have their badging on there, of course. What is the engine configuration, first off? I know. So this is a straight six, just like your beloved uh, nice. 2JZ. Yes, I love them. They're, they're really underrated engines and they're cool. So straight six, is it yes, a sir. cast iron block in the bottom, do you know, or? No, I think it's aluminum. Okay, okay. So BMW takes a normal uh, production motor and then beefs it up. Okay. So this was based off a motor called the N55, which was also twin turboed straight six. Um, this one is um, just under, it's 2979 cc's, so it's a three liter. So are the so, sequential or are they? They're not. Okay. So this setup is, um, it's basically using one turbo per three cylinders. So it's a straight six, three liter. So basically just picture your normal two liter four cylinder and then they just slap on two more cylinders. About that exact same displacement and everything. So, but then they just, yeah, they really work it out. They make it so it revs really high. So when does boost kick in around? Boost on this car kicks in pretty good, about 3000 RPM, you really start feeling it. And okay. then it's just, it's just straight. You don't get any more pull than that, only when you're shifting. Um, and how much PSI? You know, I'm not too sure, okay. um, especially with the tune. Okay. So if anybody knows that, I'd love to know what <laughs> Dynan stage three tune is for the setup. So I think it's 15 to 18 PSI, don't quote me on that. But yeah, they're only small turbos. They're like, I believe, 32 millimeter turbos made okay. by Mitsubishi. And um, yeah, I think, and they have a system that keeps those spinning at 130,000 RPMs all the time. That's just crazy. And their red line's like 190,000 RPMs. <laughs> so after intake, I think the next thing I did is I wanted to go stage three dine-in. Okay. So stage three dine-in, it requires that you have a heat exchanger. So the intercooler's up here, but it uses an air, water, uh, 
a, a radiator up front to cool the charge air for the intercooler. Oh, cool. So we have to take out the whole bumper. Me and my brother did this. Take out the whole bumper and we installed this larger, I think it's about 60% larger um, radiator for the charge air. And it's air to water or what? It is. So it's, it has coolant running through it and the, you know, the air from coming through the grill cools it off. So, you know, but you know, so it's, it's, you know, it's liquid cool. That's awesome. That definitely helps out with the it really does. heat dissipation with the higher. Yeah. Pressure. It's, it's amazing with um, just lowering, if you can lower intake temperatures and stuff, it's amazing how much more power you can get. And yeah, you don't have to, you don't have to mess with a lot. So what happened after that? So after <laughs> that, yeah. So I was able to do that. And then I saw this company, this is CSF, but this is about a 60% larger uh, intercooler. So I figured I had to have that. That's a so, you know, I got that coming and I threw that bad boy on there. And then the charge pipes uh, for the turbos were these plastic constricting, and I guess they break all the time, all the forms so that I, I So I replaced those with aluminum ones. I have to ask, so this is an intercooler. I'm it not, is. I'm not used to, you know, usually when I see an intercooler, you know, it's got like fins, looks yes. like a radiator. So that is basically that part of it. So this is just an extremely large oh, system cool. compared to like what you'd see on the top of like an STI motor yeah. my wife used to drive. Yes. So it's, so it's kind of a two part system. But it is, and they even have, there's more radiators in the in the bottom grills down there it has the in the engine not excuse me the transmission oil there's a radiator underneath that for there so there's so many radiators in this car it's ridiculous <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna stay cool <laughs> it's yeah exactly so so once again with all my mods you know i let it breathe better let it get to the turbos better uh one thing so and then one thing that really helped is i took off the catalytic converters there's oh. two of them off the turbos and I just straight piped it. So oh, they're just three and straight pipes. You straight piped it. Just that part. So there is still, the car is not completely straight piped. I have two um, secondary catalytic converters oh, okay. and then it has a small muffler. What? And then I can put it through the dining muffler with closed valves, with open valves, it'll bypass that rear muffler. So you still got a resignator little thing and these two little cats are still going through. That's pretty cool. So it does smell a little bit. Oh my. That's my. not that's not the coolest thing that's for the, sure. Oh my. my so I'm glad it's not straight piped. My, my straight Did you? Pipe, do you straight pipe the Supra? All the cats are gone and it smells. It smells pretty yeah. good, huh? When you get that wind blowing in on yeah, a nice, when like you got it. the windows down, I yeah? Like it. <laughs> it, no, but when you're driving, yeah, you don't sound, smell it. Yeah, sound. you don't smell it. So yeah, yeah you're exactly. absolutely right. All right, so Darren, we're moving on with this beautiful beast. Yes, sir. We've got to talk about the tire and wheel combination. I really yes. like it. Thank you. Yes, that is not stock. Um, it's definitely an upgrade. So what I did is I uh, went to a company, it's called Apex Racing Wheels. And so they had a, a bunch of, they have a bunch of forms on there basically. And so they have people that drive the tires. And so they kind of describe what kind of setup are you looking for? This is what you should run. So I, it's a 19 inch diameter. Um, so what I did is stock, it's 255s and 275s on the back. So I put 275s now on front and then I went to 305s in the back. Nice. So put a bunch more rubber on it, trying to, uh, trying to calm the torque um 305 is a pretty meaty tire <laughs> it's, it's wide it's cool yeah. i like it it looks really good from the back all right darren this interior is awesome but the steering wheel is mind-blowing ready for this do it <laughs> now is that from the factory no no okay this is a bmw um part but it's uh, a line they call their m performance line so yes you have to uh, this is an aftermarket add-on for any of these m's it's absolutely beautiful. Thank you. So it's Alcantara. It is. It's Alcantara. Okay. Um, yeah, it came with this nice, um, once again, car, it came with this carbon fiber piece here in the front. This is actually your airbag. So this stays original. So that's why we still got leather here. And then, yeah, I switched out some of the M buttons for your setting up your M modes. And you turn them to red? I turned them red. I did I that with the that. start button as well. I love that touch. Just to add a little funness. Yeah. Um, the normal shifters are pretty small and they're bigger than the original, but they weren't my favorite. So I actually swapped them out with these uh, carbon fiber ones and, and for the DCT transmission. With that dual clutch, guys. Yep. One of the most amazing, the the amazing transmission. Yeah, you can drive it like a like an automatic. It'll do everything you want, or you can just slap a button or how I set mine up. Um, when I'm driving around, I always like to use my paddle shifter. So um, it'll downshift on its own when you're coming up to a, uh, when you're going slow, because these transmissions are very jerky at low speed. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's really amazing. So yeah, you can kind of take control or let the car do it. That's it's really awesome. Neat. So this is, this helps you shift up here, right? It does. Yeah. So there's programs and stuff. Once we installed this, it took, 
about two hours or so. You got to disassemble some parts and run some wires. Uh, but yeah, me and my brother installed this, and then yeah, you set it up. You can set your red line. We, we got to give a shout out to your brother. He's, he's yes. He's he's. I think yeah, my brother is Ryan McCollum. He owns uh, Cartoons on First and North, and so it's a used car lot. And yeah, if you're looking for fun stuff, he he's really good at getting it. So tell us, is this yes. uh, the, in the, uh, carbon fiber package? Uh, you know, a lot of this. This is an add-on piece right here that I added. But most of the upper part is all carbon fiber from the from the factory. So yeah, like this was that when I added the steering wheel. So I added this. I added some carbon fiber around my shifter and on my shifter level. They make a, a BMW Alcantara and carbon fiber um, e-brake handle. And I got the armrest here that has carbon fiber on it. It is Alcantara leather as well. That's awesome. Well, let's give the viewers that sexy shot that everybody likes the pan of the interior. All right, guys, so it's always awesome to learn about cars. But in this video, I learned so much. Darren, thank you for sharing of your course. awesome N4 thank with you, us. Thank you, David. It was a true pleasure. And guys, thanks for watching. Stay thank tuned. Thank you, guys. And we'll see you soon.